welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar this is the first course on samasa as is our practice we begin the lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत् चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत् चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया we are dealing with the tatpurusha samasa which is one of the very important samasas in sanskrit and the tatpurusha samasa structure is shown in this particular fashion in the form of an equation where we have x and y as the two constituents which appear independently separately but in an interlinked manner and then they get compounded and become one unit they get integrated they get merged as one unit as xy amongst these two y occupies the position of the head and that is why it is highlighted by the bold characters but the important point is that xy becomes one unit in all three spheres artha shabda and also the swara now we are studying the vibhakti tatpurusha and within that also we are currently studying the tritiya vibhakti tatpurusha we have studied some sutras in the tritiya vibhakti tatpurusha in the previous lecture let us continue studying some more sutras in the tritiya vibhakti tatpurusha the first one amongst them is कृत्यर अधिकार्थ वचने कृत्यर अधिकार्थ वचने टू वन थर्टी थ्री दिस सूत्र हैज गॉट टू वर्ड्स एक्सप्लिसिटली स्टेटेड कृत्य ही विस इज थ्री स्लैश थ्री मीनिंग दैट विथ द प्रतिपदिक विच एन इन कृत्य सफिक्स and adhikartha vachane is 7/1 which means in the sense of additional meaning expressed in the form of either praise or censure words continued are sup sahasupa and also samarthap padavidhi which is obviously there the other word continued is tritiya this is also a word which ends in prathama and therefore it becomes upasarjana by the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and as a result of upasarjanam purvam this upasarjana tritiyanta word occupies the initial position of the compound so there is this purva nipata that happens we also have kartru karane followed from the previous sutra and this is also upasarjana so tritiya in the sense of karta as well as karana is what continues what this means is the following kartrartham tritiya sup karanartham cha tritiya sup kritya kridanta pratipadika prakritikena subantena samarthena sah samasyate अधिकार्थ वचने गम्यमाने आई रिपीट कर्तरार्थम तृतीया सुप करणार्थम च तृतीया सुप कृत्य कृदंत प्रातिपदिक प्रकृति के सुबंतेन समर्थेन सह समस्यते अधिकार्थ वचने गम्यमाने 
So the meaning is the subanta, which has a trutiya sub, such that is it expresses either a karta or a karana, is compounded with another interrelated subanta, whose pratipadika is such that it ends in a kritya krit suffix, and when adhikartha is conveyed by the compound. The additional meaning is conveyed by the compound. I repeat, the subanta, which has a trutiya sup, such that it expresses either a karta or a karana, is compounded with another interrelated subanta, whose pratipadika is such that it ends in a kritya krit suffix and the compound conveys the additional sense either of praise or that of censure. It can be shown in this particular manner. The first subanta consists of a pratipadika plus tritiya, tritiya denoting either a karta or a karana, and the second subanta with the pratipadika having the kritya suffix at the end, followed by su. Obviously, the compound output is the first pratipadika plus the second pratipadika having the kritya suffix at the end. Now, by default, kritya suffix denotes the meaning karma. Tayoreva kritya kta khalarthaha. So, the interrelated trutiya will invariably denote karta or karana. Now, what is a kritya suffix? We need to know a little bit about this. Now, kritya is a name of a bunch of suffixes that are added to a verbal root or a dhatu. These kritya suffixes fall under the broad category of krit suffixes. So, the output generated after the addition of these suffixes is a pratipadika. These kritya suffixes are stated in the section 3195 up to 31132. The sutra 3195 is kritya. This is an adhikara sutra. So hereafter the suffixes up to 132 are all termed as kritya suffixes. That's what this sutra says. So following suffixes are termed kritya. First of all, 3.196 says, tavyat tavyani yaraha. So tavyat is the first suffix. So we have kru as a verbal root, to which is added tavyat, and so we derive the form kartavya. Now kartavya is the form at the end of which appears the suffix tavya, which is a kritya suffix, which is a krit suffix. So kartavya is a kritya pratyayanta kridanta saf, kridanta word, kridanta pratipadika. The second kritya suffix is aniya. In fact, the sutra tavyat tavyani yaraha states tavyat as the first suffix and tavya as the second suffix and then aniya as the third. There is no formal difference between tavyat and tavya. There is one difference of accent which we shall study in detail when we study the Shashti Tatpurusha Samasa later in this particular course. The second suffix is Aniya. So we add Aniya suffix to the verbal root Kru and we derive the form Karaniya. Then we also have Ya stated by Achoyatu as well as Ruhalorinyatu. 3.1.1.24. So, Kru plus Nyat, that is Kru plus Ya, and we get the form Karya. The meaning of Karya is something that is to be done, some action to be performed. The meaning of the Kritya suffix is the following Tayoreva Krityakta Khalarthaha, that is the Sutra which states the meaning of the kritya suffix. What this means is that the suffixes kritya, kta and kalartha denote only those two senses, namely karma and bhava. The additional meaning of arha or yogya, that is fit for doing 
or should be done is provided by the Sutra Arahe Kritya Trachascha 33169. Another additional meaning of Shakya, namely possible, is stated by the Sutra Shakilingcha 33172. So now Kartavya, Karaniya and Karya would mean something that is fit to be done or something that should be done. What is the meaning of Adhikartha Vachana? Adhikartha Vachana means in the sense of additional meaning expressed in the form of either praise or censure. Stuti Ninda Falakam Arthavada Vachanam Adhikartha Vachanam The statement of propagation with the result being either a praise or a censure is termed as Adhikartha Vachana. This is denoted only by the process of compounding and not by the mere sentential occurrence. Non-compounded corresponding sentence does not denote this additional meaning. So now we want to convey the meaning river that is fit for the crow to drink the water. Now this could be a praise. The river is so full that even crows sitting on the bank can drink water from it. Purnatoyatvat tatasthaihi kakairapi patum shakya iti stutihi. Or the other meaning of censure could be of this kind river that is fit for the crow to drink water. And this could be a censure as well. What it means is that the river is so dry, there is no water in the river that it contains water fit only to be consumed by crows. Alpatoyatvat ka kai river patum shakya iti ninda. This is the adhikartha vachana. When this is to be conveyed, the compound is generated. So here we have kakaihi peya nadi as the laukika vigraha. And here kakaihi is tritiyanta and peya is prathamanta. So we have kaka plus bhis plus peya plus su. This is the alaukika vigraha. And we note that the word peya consists of the verbal root pa with the suffix ya which is the kritya suffix and so now there is a tritiyanta subanta and interrelated kritya kridanta pratipadika related subanta and so there is interrelation and so they are eligible to be compounded together and the compound process continues and because this is a samasa this is also a pratipadika and therefore the Sups, which are part of this Pratipadika, they get deleted. So we have Kaka plus 0 plus Peya plus 0. And then we finally get Kaka Peya as the derived output. So Kaka Peya Nadi, that is the output generated. Kaka Hi Peya Nadi would not convey the sense which is additional that is conveyed by the compound. And the purpose of making a compound over here is precisely to denote this particular additional meaning. Similarly, the other example could be described in the following manner. The example is Vata Chedyam Tranam. What it means is grass that is fit to be cut by wind. It could be praise. What it means is that grass is so tender that it is possible for the wind also to cut it. So the tenderness is praised. Komalatvat vate napi chittum shakyate iti stutihi. Or there is a sense of censure. Grass that is fit to be cut even by wind. Grass is so weak that even wind can cut it and this could be a censure. Nirbalatvat. Vate napi chittum shakyate iti ninda. So these are the adhikarthas, and in order to convey them, the process of compounding takes place. 
सो हियर इज द एग्जाम्पल वाते न छेद्यम तृणम नाउ इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस वी हैव वात प्लस ता प्लस छेद्य प्लस सु दिस इज द अलौकिक विग्रह वात छेद्य नाउ वी नो नोट दैट द वर्ड छेद्य इज डिराइव्ड बाय एडिंग द सफिक्स य to the verbal root chhed that becomes chhedya now this y suffix is a kritya suffix so chhedya is a kritya kridanta pratipadika and vata is related to this action of cutting denoted by the verbal root chhed as karana so we have वात प्लस टा प्लस छिद प्लस य प्लस सु एंड देन दिस बिकम्स अ समास एंड देर फर इट बिकम्स अ प्रातिपदिक एंड देन पार्ट ऑफ दिस प्रातिपदिक आर द टू सुप्स हु गेट डिलीटेड एंड सो वी हैव वात एंड छेद्य एंड फाइनली वी गेट वात छेद्यम तृणम वात छेद्य एज द आउटपुट ऑफ द कंपाउंड so what a chedya conveys the additional sense of ninda or stuti and vatena chedyam tranam is not able to convey this particular sense there is some restriction imposed by the usage of the speakers which the commentators have noted examples of other kritya suffixes like tavya and aniya are not found compounded under the conditions stated by this sutra even though they are termed as kritya suffix so for example if you have kakaihi patavya or kakaihi paniya in the same sense this is not found to be compounded this is very peculiar only peya is compounded and kakapeya is aksamasa but kakapatavya or kakapaniya this samasa does not exist as far as the traditional commentators are concerned let us proceed further now we have annena vyanjanam 2134 annena vyanjanam there are two padas in this particular sutra annena which is 31 of anna anna means main food and this main food is to be complemented with the samskarya which is the one that adds something to it and vyanjanam is one one and vyanjana means something that adds to the main food so this is the samskaraka which complements the main food for example if rice is the main food then the curry that accompanies the rice can be considered as vyanjana because it complements the rice rather than eating the rice alone right rice mixed with curry is the food that is generally preferred so curry becomes the vyanjana and rice becomes the anna in this case vyanjana is mentioned in the prathama vibhakti so vyanjana will be termed as upasarjana by the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and then this vyanjana will occupy the initial position of the compound that is purva nipat the words continued over here are sup from 212 and sahasupa from 214 samarthap padavidhihi is obviously always there and also trutiya which is 1/1 from the previous sutra now trutiya is also 1/1 which is also an upasarjana and also will have purva nipata so now we have vyanjanam and trutiya two words in prathama so they are interrelated 
So this Pyanjana should be in the Tritya Vibhakti. That is how this interrelation takes shape. Now this is the process. We have the meaning rice with curds. So dadna upasiktaha odanaha. Now in this case dadna and odanaha, these two are interrelated through the action of mixing upasiktaha. So we have dadhi plus ta plus odana plus su as the alaukika vigraha and then we have the samasa saudhnya and then we have the pratipadika saudhnya so we notice that ta and su they both are part of the pratipadika and so supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and deletes both the sups and so we have dadhi plus zero plus odana plus zero and then we join the two together and we get the form daddhyodana which is the finally derived compound output, the dhyodana. So rice with curds or dadna upasiktaha odanaha, this is the input and the dhyodana is the output of the compound. The next sutra is bhakshyena mishri karanam 2.135. This sutra consists of two padas, bhakshyena, which is three slash one of bhakshya. Bhakshya means something that is to be eaten. And this is the three one of bhakshya. Mishri karanam is one slash one of mishri karana, something that it, that it is mixed with, something that the bhakshya is mixed with. Mishri karana. Now Mishri Karana appears in the Prathama Vibhakti and because of the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasopa Sarjanam, the word meaning Mishri Karana becomes Upasarjana and occupies the initial position of the Samasa, Purva Nipata. The words continued are Sup and Sahasupa and also Samarthaha Padavidhi. The other word continued is Trutiya, which is also 1 slash 1. So Trutiya and Mishri Karana, they also are interlinked. So this Mishri Karana must be in Trutiyanta. So the meaning is grains mixed with jaggery, Guda Mishritaha Dhanaha. This is the input. And the output is Guda plus Ta plus Dhana plus Jasu. And here we have Guda, which is the Mishri Karana, and Dhana, which is the Bhakshya. So somebody eats Dhana, the grains, as a main food and mixes them with the jaggery. So Dhana is. Bhakshya, Guda is Mishri Karana and through the action of mixing, Guda is interlinked with Dhana and therefore there is Samarthya and therefore there is compounding and then this Alaukika Vigraha is the point where the process of compounding begins. It gets the term Samasa over here and because of Samasa it also gets the term Pratipadika and then we note that Ta and Jas are part of the Pratipadika and so they get deleted by supodhatu pratipadika yoho. So we get guda and dhana. And then we join the words together and we get the finally derived output in the form of guda dhana. Guda dhana. So guda mishritaha dhanaha, this is the input, and guda dhana, this is the output of the compound stated by 2135. Bhakshyena Mishri Karanam. To summarize, the, the Tritiya Vibhakti Tatpurusha also is an example of having compound internal dependencies. 
Sometimes it is the karaka relation of karta and karana related to the action denoted by the verbal root or sometimes through the action that is conveyed by the compound the purvapada pratipadika is interrelated with the uttarapada pratipadika. Now these are primarily the interrelations between the constituents. They are not specifically stated in the sutra in case of 34 and 35, Annena Vyanjanam and Bhakshena Mishri Karanam. But they are assumed and they are understood by the action stated otherwise and also assumed in the Sutra. In 33, the purpose of compounding is to denote the additional meaning, that is why the compounding is made by the speakers of Sanskrit. There is also a note on the behavior of speaker which says that not always the compound is made even if all the conditions are present. This is extremely important. This goes to show the overall tendency of the speaker of Sanskrit to do this particular process in a loose manner. These are the texts referred to, these are the traditional sources and we take up the next Vibhakti Tatpurusha in the next lecture. Thank you for your patience.